to say that these little children, little kids, have a right, bigger right, better right. Divorce cannot be something simple. We have not got there. There's no right for the unborn. People have AIDS or they're a crack addict and they can have children. There's no right, there's no moral develop to say that these children, they do not want to be born out of a person who is on crack or is on cocaine, he has AIDS, she has this kind of problem. There's not a single human being on the planet would agree, would disagree with me to say that if they were born out of a mother who had AIDS, those children would have said that I wish I was not born to be born with this disease or this sickness. We have not grown out yet to say that there are moral values extended to the life of the unborn. If a person wants to be like that, she has to be sterilized. He can't have children. Till you change completely, it has to be proven to us because you cannot mother a child that tomorrow the child is going to ask us in the society, why did you let me to be born in this dirty womb of this woman that not only does not take care of me, not even able to take care of herself. What is my fault? We have not gone there yet. yet. So, we have, you know, a, a paradox. To have religion or moral values of the past, we can't get along because none of these people can just come together. They don't accept Christians, Muslims, Hindus. They don't accept each other's moral values. No moral values go to the Ayato TV or, you know, Hollywood. Then we have no moral. Then any moral is your moral. You write it down yourself. That is not being helpful at all also. So the solution that I have found as a person, as an individual, as a Canadian, as a person, a human being, I found that's Baha'i faith. Because it's a mechanism that is exactly like a transfer station. If you're a Christian, you come in here, you get transferred in such a way that you do not see Muslims are against you. They're actually with you. Or Buddhists or Hindus or others are against you. No, but nobody is against you, the Christians. They're just different. And the same case with that. The Baha'i faith is able to transfer the individual, to give them a broader view of each other and of the reality. So Baha'i faith is the solution to this issue, in my opinion, because it has created a... a, a system of principles. On one hand, it says all the foundations of all the religion is one. And on the other hand, it says that religion has to be according to science and logic. Essentially, if you cannot logically and scientifically explain it, don't believe in it. Be doubtful about your belief system. It cannot be explained scientifically. That's clearly what Baha'u'llah says. Abdul Baha says if religion goes outside of the science, it becomes mere imaginations. See, that's a great, great way of saying it. On the other hand, it's not dogmatic. It has transferred the spiritual power into democracy by electing the priest in a city called local spiritual assembly, local house of uh, elders, and in the national, again, national house of elders or national... Uh, House of Justice, National House of Guardianship, that comes in the future. As in, so is in the world, the Universal House of Justice is existing right now. There will be Universal House of Guardianship too. It's all elections. People are electing two opposite forces that interact with each other and they go on to make religions. Whatever has not been revealed, the morals, anything that we need. It just goes on. It's not a dogmatic, here it is, that's it. Baha'u'llah has brought a foundations for it, you know. And the rest of it is up to us. So when you look at it, nations are together because of their common values, common 
traditions, these customs that they have. All the Muslim they say each other salam, you know, or salam and alaik, or Jews they say shalom. I ironically, both means the same. <laughs> and um, Christians, you know, their ways. So Baha'u'llah says that since these words of greeting is attached to so many debris in the past, I'm just going to use a new one. You guys, when you see each other, just say, Allahu Akbar, God is glorious, most glorious. It's a greeting. Because under which we are changing the pattern, you see. A new moral, you know, to be set. He says, don't enter somebody's house without permission. Even if it's your own child, don't. Privacy. New sets of moral, okay? Uh, you want to marry, don't just marry. You can have a period of uh, engagement for 95 days. Up to 95 days, you can renew it. Know each other before you marry. Most importantly, your mother and father have to be involved in it. If they didn't, didn't disown you, if they're not dead, because they gave rise to you. They, their opinion has to be, their input has to be in there. If you want this family to be uh, integrated in hard and together, get the input from mom and dad, they have to agree with it. Legally, they have to agree with it. Or even in divorce. Baha'u'llah says, okay, if you don't get along, that's fine. If you're not happy, that's fine. But you have to take a year of patience. Which is ironic, it's in Canada. Canadian, they don't read Baha'i faith to do this. It's just in the Canada, they have to wait one year before your divorce is issued. <laughs> this was done by Baha'u'llah way before Canada was even formed. So, Baha'is, they call year of patience. And Baha'u'llah says, live in the same city. You might get together again. It might be the distance uh, has to be, you know, apart, so you might think about each other and appreciate each other's more. If not, after a year, you can get, you know, get divorced. You know, custodies are joined, for example. The kids can stay with the mother, but it is joint things. So, why is that? Is because Baha'i's morals is not just do it because it is beneficial to others. I'm going to be nice and polite because it is good for others. No, no, no. Behind it is good for you. There's a goal in this. The life and this thing is not a deadlock that we're going to die and goodbye everything. That's not the case. Baha'i Faith, in fact, says this is the beginning. The life has not even began the existence of humanity yet. It, it happens after we die. You know, it makes very sense. In the womb of the mother, they develop all this. Uh, faculties, eyes and ears and the body to be able to communicate here. And in here, you use those communications in order to grow up spiritually. And once these two processes done, you begin to exist after you die. I explained this before. Mankind is like a computer and there's a CD, which is the soul is in it. We have to write a good file who we are, as we do in this CD. When we die, the CD gets separated from the computer. The computer goes away, but the CD remains. If it is a great CD with a lot of formulas, a lot of great things, it will be staying out forever. It reaches the consistency on its own, it develops. It's made it that when it comes out, it will turn into something else and it will go on. And if it is not, unfortunately, uh, you know, it perishes. It will totally get not disintegrated, not, not completely gone, but the difference of those souls and the souls that are developed, Abdul Bas is, is like a human compared to hay. What's a hay? You know? Nothing compared to a human being. That much of a difference between those existence. So 
because I have to speak about morals and moral values because they're part of the ethical value. A lot of people, they don't have religion in the West, but they've created these moral ideas that I explain, whether it's environmentalism or freedom fighting or philanthropy. And some of them, you know, they even have the orders, you know, to get rich and exploit others. They have not proper, you know, things. So, uh, uh, well, I think uh, that's enough about this uh, subject right now. And I shall speak about uh, later on about the manner and respect and politeness next time. Thank you so long. <laughs>